If you're having trouble dropping maps or keeping them sustained at a high tier, trust me, you're not alone. This is a question that I get almost more than any other question in the game. How do you sustain high tier maps? Well, I'm here to tell you. Hey guys, Big Ducks here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're having issues sustaining high tier maps, you're not alone, as I said. Tons of people have problems with this, and all it's going to take is changing a couple little things that you do and learning a little bit about how the Atlas works to completely revolutionize the way the maps drop for you. And if you don't know how to do that, that's what I'm here to tell you. So before we begin with any of the strategies, feel free to jump to whatever portion of this video. I have them all timestamped so you can use the cool little new feature that YouTube's got to click whichever portion of the video that you want. Jump to wherever you need to. We're going to be starting with baby steps though. But remember, if you like my content and you want more people to see it, give this video a like. And also, if you want more content like this in your YouTube feed, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with all my videos. And without further ado, let's get it. Alright boys, so the very first thing that you need to know if you are an absolute new player is what are maps? Maps are an item such as this right here that you can drop into the map device once you get to the end of the game, you finish the campaign, you finish the opening introductory quest, you've gotten your map device, you've talked to this boy over here, his name is Officer Kirik, and you open up your map device. You should have a couple of these maps, they'll drop throughout the course of the game itself. You pop the map into the device here, I know you can barely see it behind my camera, and you should be able to open up a map to a new zone. A map is just like any zone that you're used to throughout the game. It opens a specific area, it's got enemies in it, and a boss is at the end of the map. That's all that you really need to know about maps themselves. Initially, I suggest that you just run a couple of maps, get used to the feel of them. You're not going to have any issues sustaining just a couple little low tier maps. If you're very, very new to the game, just kind of get the feel of it. Make sure that you've got your gear upgraded, get your resist max, get your life pool good, get your damage up, replace some of your gear if you need to. And then once you've done all of that, you're going to start seeing this guy named Baron. He's a big giant conqueror. I'll put a picture of him on the screen here if you don't know what I'm talking about. And he is going to show up in one of your maps. Now what's going to happen is that when you eventually do open up the Atlas, which is linked with the G key initially, you're gonna see this giant thing here. And if you still have PTSD from opening up the skill tree for the first time, this is basically the same exact thing except maps. Now yours isn't gonna look exactly like this. You're not gonna have any of these maps unlocked. You're only gonna have the one or two that you begin with right here in the inside. You're gonna start with tier one maps. Now the very biggest piece of advice I can give you for how to get different maps and how to get them to drop is that if you do not see the map unlocked on this atlas here, it cannot drop for you. If you cannot see the same tier and name of the map on your atlas, it cannot drop for you normally from maps. Just remember that one rule and it will answer almost any question you've got about why this specific map isn't dropping. The next thing that you need to know is that when you are initially progressing your atlas, if a map is not lit up, let me see, I don't have any here, but say like this fields map was not lit up, correct? The only way that you would be able to get a natural drop of the fields map is if you did one of these maps that was directly connected to it. So it's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Maps can also only drop one or two tiers higher. That is the absolute max. A boss mob can drop a map two tiers higher than what you're in, and a normal mob can only drop one tier higher than what you're in at the very most. Those are the basics of how maps work. So as long as you know most of those things, you should be able to naturally progress and fill out your atlas a little bit. Now let's take that one step further. You've probably noticed the big lightning guy who's shown up on your atlas and you need to kill him if you've done enough maps and it'll show up a zone like this and it'll give you a red color area. Now I have Al Hesman, so this is what we're going to use for this, but you'll see that this area here is colored in. So what that means is that if you do maps of the correct level of this zone, you will see him eventually and you will get to fight him. Now this is the most important part about actually progressing through the Atlas. You need to kill these conquerors. You have to go after them and you have to go out of your way to get to them. Now what I want to show you here is these stones over here. Now each conqueror has a specific stone. Ron is going to drop the red, Veritani is going to drop the blue, Al Hesman is going to drop the green, and Drox is going to drop the yellow. Each of these zones has four of these stones in it. So if you mouse over the citadel of Hayworth Hamlet, you're going to see there's four that are there. Now you're also going to see it says number of socketed watch stones, four required to spawn conqueror. So the idea is, is as you progress through the Atlas, if you want to spawn a Conqueror in a certain zone, you gotta have a certain amount of Atlas Stones there. So we'll drop in some Atlas Stones and you'll see, when you drop a single Atlas Stone into this area, it's increased the level of all of the maps. These are now yellow maps instead of white maps. 
if we take this back out and put it back over here, you'll see these are tier fives, tier fours, tier fours, tier threes. As I said before, if you need to progress the tiers of your maps, you need to grab these watch zones and put them in. They're going to drop from the conquerors. You need to do maps in the different areas and kill those conquerors in those areas to be able to get the watch zones that show up there. That is the most basic of progression that you're going to get on the Atlas. Progress through the Atlas, slot in these watch zones as you, as you get them, and make sure that all of the tiers of maps are available for you. Make sure they're all available. Make sure that you have tiers one through 16 all the way up to the top until you get to the very, very end of the game where you have all of the watch zones filled in. Make sure you're actually able to drop those maps. Don't forget that part. You have to be able to see the tier of map on your Atlas for it to be able to drop for you. If you cannot see a tier 15 or 16 map on the Atlas, it will not drop naturally. That is the major thing about progressing through the Atlas. The next step that we want to do is that you might have a couple of the watch zones unlocked. You might be getting some maps, but now you're having issues actually sustaining them. So the next thing that you're gonna want to know how to do is how to actually roll maps properly. Now this map that you see here is a map that I've rolled. It's a tier 16 map. And we're gonna talk about some of the actual things on this map real quick before we get into rolling. You need to know why you're rolling the maps a certain way. So if you look at this map here, you're going to notice a couple of things. First, at the very top, you're going to notice it says item quantity, item rarity, and monster pack size. You're also going to see quality there. We'll talk about that later. The two things that you need to pay attention to here are item quantity and monster pack size. Rarity is completely irrelevant. Never look at rarity. It is not worth it. Item quantity on the map is the only thing that will affect how many maps actually drop for you. Monster pack size is going to affect how many enemies are in the map. Now a lot of people get this wrong. Monster pack size is not just the number that you see there. Monster pack size is also in the actual mods of the map if you see. It says 28% more rare monsters. There's a few of those. There's more rare monsters, there's more magic monsters, there's chance to spawn beyond monsters. There's a ton of stuff that adds additional monsters to the map. We'll also talk about some that you can get from currency later. So when you're rolling maps, the main thing that you're looking for is you're looking for high item quantity, high monster pack size, and mods that increase the amount of monsters in the map. Knowing that, let's begin. So if you're looking at a white map, you have a few options here. When you're initially getting into the Atlas and you're doing your first few maps, just use transmutation orbs or chance orbs on the actual maps themselves. Once you've gotten into say like tier threes to fives and you need to start progressing, if you have an abundance of alchemy orbs, you can start using alchemy orbs on your like tier three to five maps. It's actually fine to invest more into your maps. Don't be afraid to do it. it it's actually okay. You may think, oh, I don't have very many alchemies. I don't have very many chance orbs. I'm really scared to be putting this into these maps. That is the mindset that's going to make you not be able to progress. You gotta invest in these maps to be able able to actually progress, especially early on. So what you would do with say a tier one map is you would just transmute it, make sure that you can actually run the mods on here. There is a chance that you could roll a mod that you can't actually handle. So say you're a physical build and you roll monsters reflect physical damage. You can't run that, so you're not gonna be able to do it. That's what you need to know for white maps. When you get up to yellow maps, this is when you're going to want to start alking every single map and volling every single map. Now I know that a lot of people are gonna say, oh, you shouldn't be using vol orbs on your yellow maps, but yes, you should. Spend some of your currency, buy some vol orbs, and just roll them on your maps. Now this isn't gonna matter for you later on because you're not gonna be running yellow maps. This is when you're initially trying to get through the league. Now there are a few reasons that you wanna vol orb maps. Let's see if we can get it here. So we're going to alchemy this map. It's gonna get a ton of mods. Make sure that you can run all of the mods on the map first because one of the things that the vol orb can do is nothing. So so we're going to vol orb this map and you're going to see that it went unidentified. Now this is actually important. Unidentified is good. All of the mods on the map stayed the same, but when a map becomes unidentified, it gains 20% additional quantity. And remember what I told you about quantity. There's a couple other things that can happen. You can roll a map and it'll give you eight modifiers, which is only possible through corrupting the map. Typically those are very dangerous, so be careful with them. It can also completely change the map into a different map. The last thing that it can do is sometimes it can give you a map one tier higher. This is the reason why you're going to be volling your yellow maps. As you vol the yellow maps and go through, you're randomly gonna be pushed into one tier higher maps occasionally, and you're gonna be able to get more drops out of it. You've made it through yellow maps, you've moved through the Atlas, you've put in a bunch of these stones, you've got red maps available, they can drop. Now you need to know what you're doing. 
when you get to red maps, what I'm gonna suggest that you start doing is when you start getting these high tier maps, you're gonna see I have some things called sextants on here, but let's start with actually rolling the map itself. What you're gonna wanna do is you have these items called chisels. These improve the quality of the map, and what the quality of the map does is it increases the item quantity that drop in the map. As I've told you, item quantity is super important, so you're going to want to chisel the map while it is white. Now, I didn't grab enough chisels, so we're gonna grab a few more here, but when you take these chisels, if you use four chisels on a white map, it will be 20%. So the lower the item type of the map, meaning like white, blue, yellow, unique, the more that your chisels are going to affect it. So four chisels will completely quality a white map. Then what you're going to do is you're going to alchemy orbit, and at this point, say that you get bad mods, right? You can do one of a few things. You can either dump it for a different build that you're gonna play some other time, you can scour and elk it, or you can invest the chaos if you want to. Sometimes investing a chaos is just what I do if I've got plenty of money sitting around, but honestly, you don't really need to do that every time. And then with these maps, you're going to need to vol orb them if they are bad. But what that means is that you can see we actually upgraded to a tier 12 map here from a tier 11. If the map rolls, and the map rolls mods that you can do, but they are bad, meaning that like you're not getting good quantity, you're not getting good pack size, you're not getting good modifiers, just vol the map. Don't even worry about it, just vol the map. Almost always it will be a better outcome. You saw that it uptiered there. So now the next thing that we're gonna talk about now that we know how to actually roll our maps is going to be investing into those maps. And there's a couple things that you can do. So let's talk about actually investing in your map. So the first thing that you're gonna notice is on your map, you're gonna see these little map mods here that you can run. These are Zana's map mods. Honestly, you don't really need to worry about these too much early on. I typically only use these on tier 14 to 16 maps at the very, very end of the game. Otherwise, these are a very high investment for not enough return early on. The major thing that you wanna think about when you're choosing which map mod to roll is what of these map mods is going to push more monsters into the area. So for example, Breach would push more monsters into the area. Nemesis would push more monsters into the area. Metamorph and Legion would both push way more monsters into the area. That's what you wanna think about. Other thing that you wanna think about are these map missions down here. Now these are from the different masters that you're gonna see around the hideout. We've got June, Einhar, Nico, Alva, and Zana. So these map missions do different things. The one that is the most important for progressing is Zana. Zana's map missions, what they do is that when you use it on a map, it's going to cause her to appear in that map and give you an additional map to choose from. These can be unique maps, they can be corrupted maps, high tier maps, all kinds of stuff. There's infinite things that can be spawning in here. Later on when you're in like tier 16 maps, you can see Elder Guardians, Shaper Guardians, unique synthesis maps that drop all kinds of crazy stuff. Zana's map mods are typically best used on the highest of the different tiers of maps. So you'll see that there's like three different little mission symbols here. You'll see white, yellow, and red. Typically you would use these on like tier fives, tier 10s, and tier 16s. What I personally recommend to get the best use out of. The other ones that can be important are Einhar, Alva, and June. I think that June is very useful for unlocking enchants. Alva can be good for just getting some additional monsters in the map and getting some more stuff to kill. And Einhar is useful for getting like flask enchants and just extra items and extra monsters in the map. Nico, if you like Delve, you can use Nico, but that's all that he does. He just enables you to go into Delve. As you can see, I really don't do these two very often, but I definitely do Zana and Einhar constantly. You're also going to notice that there's multiple slots in here. Don't worry about the fact that I have five right now. You can get that later on. But when you're rolling maps, another thing that you can do is you can use fragments to increase the quantity, once again, the quantity of items that drop in a map. You'll see we have these fragments here. And when you drop them into here, each fragment that you put in here is going to increase it by a small percentage. I think it's 7% per fragment that you put in there. Don't quote me on that. I don't know the exact amount. However, you can dump a bunch of fragments in here. With a five slot map device, you can also drop an extra fragment in here. They do have to be different fragments for it to work. Now, additionally, another step beyond that is you can put scarabs in here. These cause specific effects to happen on the maps themselves. You don't need to worry too much about scarabs early on. This is more of a high tier thing that you can worry about, but you can see what they do. Additional harbingers, add shaper influence to the map. More shaper rares will drop in the map. Increase piranhas chest, chance to spawn Kadira piranhas. They're pretty obvious with what they do. Now, when I say fragments, I mean only these sacrifice fragments. The other fragments do stuff, but they are much more worthwhile to be run as is or sold instead of being dumped into your map device. So after you've done all of that, you've put all these pieces, you've rolled your map well, you've put the fragments in, you've ran the map mod, you've done the Zana mods, you've done everything all together, and you're gonna open this map and it's gonna be awesome. There's one thing that most people forget, and that is sextants. So, sextants are these items that you see right here. 
There's simple sextants, prime sextants, and awakened sextants. Now, these do all similar things, they're just higher tier versions of the mods that they roll. So I'm gonna show you here, if we use a sextant modifier, we'll use it on this yellow one here, it's going to add an additional set of mods to the map itself. You're gonna see this as found items drop identified and identified maps, 15% increase pack size and unidentified maps, and 30% increase quantity of items found in unidentified maps. Something like that is going to be useful to run an unidentified map in. So not only is a normal unidentified map gonna give you 20% extra quantity, with this one it's going to give you 15% increase pack size and 30% increase quantity as well. So you might wanna save this one in particular for when you've got some unidentified maps. So when you're running these sextants, there are interesting mechanics that you can use. Like say you've got area contains extra strong boxes, strong boxes are rare and strong boxes are corrupted. So say that Zana's map mod has ambush, right? This says area contains three extra strong boxes. You might wanna roll ambush on a map that has a whole bunch of extra cool strong boxes on it. Same thing with anything else. Now, there are a ton of these that are just kind of useless. There's one that just puts a bunch of barrels in the map and one that just puts all kinds of random stuff in there. But the sextants are a huge part later on in the game of being able to really push the amount of maps that you're getting and the amount of items that drop. If you're not using sextants, you're probably missing out on like 20 to 30% of the possible amount of enemies that you could be fighting in a map. It's not an exaggeration. The next thing that we need to talk about beyond focusing on conquerors, beyond just trying to get the maps cleared, beyond getting and rolling all of your maps, is these two numbers right here. This is probably the most important thing about actually getting maps to drop. If you take nothing else from this video, if you have one thing that you can tell a friend who's complaining about the fact that they can't drop maps, well, just send them this video, who cares? This number right here, completed bonus objectives, this is the thing that you need to focus on. You get this, by clearing maps with whatever it says on here. You're gonna see it says bonus, kill boss of magic or higher version of this map. Complete these, complete these as many as you can. The more of these that you complete, the easier it's going to be to be able to drop maps. You can see with 137 out of 154, I have a 37% chance for maps to drop two tiers higher than what they would have anyways. Once you start getting over the, this over 70 or 80 or 100, you're not gonna have problems with maps anymore, I promise you. This is the most important thing that you need to know. Finish your maps, clear them out, get the bonus objectives. Now also you're gonna notice that there is this awakening bonus objective as well. This increases the effect of modifiers on maps, which can be dangerous and good. It's gonna increase how many of say like additional magic monsters or additional rare monsters or anything else that spawns on the map. It's also gonna make the other modifiers more difficult. This is also going to make it so that you get more Atlas missions as you complete it. This is not as important, but it is important for much later on investing into high tier maps. Make sure that you focus on getting these numbers up. Super, super important. Now there's one last thing that we need to talk about on the Atlas. As you clear and as you gain these watchstones and slot them into your map, you're gonna notice this number in the middle increases. Now you can see there's a bunch of extra bonuses per level of awakening that you're going to see on here. It is going to make map bosses harder, it's going to make enemies harder, it's going to make them drop additional items, and it's going to cause more influence items from the conquerors themselves to be able to drop. This number is super important as you progress further, however, it makes everything much more difficult. So if you're having issues actually running high tier maps because the bosses are just too hard for your build, you can actually remove watchstones to lower this level. So you're going to see when I put this fourth watchstone in, it upgrades to the highest, which is awakening level eight. This is the hardest that enemies can be in the end game. This is the hardest that bosses can be in the end game. And it's going to make it much more difficult, but give you much more lucrative rewards. Now that I've put all of these back into the Atlas, you see that we're on awakening level eight. This is as hard as things get. Uh, we're going to actually run a map. I've got this map here. We're going to run a whole bunch of stuff on it. It's got a rusted shaper scarab. This is a T16 toxic sewers map. A bunch of fragments in here. It has a couple sections already on it, but we're going to add some more. So we've got players deal increased damage for each poison on them, additional packs of poisonous monsters, additional packs of cold monsters, additional breaches, and additional packs of mirrored rare monsters. So you're going to see, most likely, unless we get unlucky, this map is going to be absolutely packed full of enemies. It's going to be insanely dense. It's going to be really difficult. It's going to be a ton of stuff going on. But I'll show you what it looks like to have super high investment. We're going to run a metamorph Zana mod. We're going to run a Zana map mission. We're going to run a tier 16 map. 
Shaper Scarab, and three sockets. Not three sockets, three sacrifice fragments. So this map, for example, is going to have a absolutely ridiculous amount of monsters. You're gonna see, they're just gonna be everywhere. There's gonna be tons of them, and you're not even gonna be able to know what to do with how many monsters that are in here. If your maps don't look like this, you're probably not investing enough into it. I'm not gonna be worrying about picking up any items, we're just gonna be zooming through. Now typically you would wanna do those vault side zones for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to do that. So as you run through these maps, there's a couple things that should be going through your head. One, you should be focusing on finding all of these additional little areas like breaches or delirium mirrors or harbingers or anything like that that you can find, legion stones, and clearing all of those out as best as you can. Typically, if you're worried about just clearing maps quicker so that you can get more profits, you would just be going, going, going. You're not going to worry about drops because you're already going to have enough drops at that point. However, if you're worrying about sustaining maps, you really need to make sure that you clear the maps fully. Up in the top right corner, you're gonna notice it says more than 50 monsters remain. You should be trying to get that under 50 at minimum when clearing these maps if you're worried about being able to sustain them. You're gonna make sure that you clear the boss, you're gonna make sure that you clear as many enemies as you can, and you're gonna bring this number down to under 50. That is the main thing that you're gonna be worrying about. You're gonna see here, we're gonna have a Zana map mission here. Now the reason why Zana is so important in comparison to the other masters is because this just provides you additional maps. Let's clear this out a little bit. We'll pick up our seeds here and we'll talk to Zana. So she's gonna give you a ton of random master missions. Now you're gonna see here, she's given us two missions that provide us elder bosses. So what you can do is you can choose these elder bosses. It'll say defeat the elder guardian. You go in here, you get a fragment of the elders, like little keystone thing that you can put into the map device and you can go fight the elder once you have all of the different fragments. There's also shaper guardians in here. But one thing that you wanna look out for is when you alt on maps, you're gonna see. It'll show you if you've done the atlas map, it'll show you if you've done the bonus objective and the awakening objective. When you see these maps, make sure that you look to see if there's any of them. Like for example, we haven't completed the awakening objective on this marshes map. Now, if I didn't want to do these elder maps, I would choose this marshes map because I wanna make sure that I get that awakening objective. We're gonna check to make sure we can do all the map mods. Can't leech, can't leech mana. It has slaying enemies nearby, has a chance to attract monsters from beyond, more magic monsters. Honestly, this is a ridiculously good map. Um, the quantity is not too high, but it's got a ton of extra monsters pushed into the map. More magic monsters and beyond, that's a ton of extra monsters. You would activate this mission, you jump in here, you do the map. But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to continue with what we've got here. So you'll do everything that you can, all of the metamorphs, all the legion zones, you'll make sure that you clear the map as best you can and pick up all of the map drops. Now, something that I want to mention, you've noticed we haven't gotten any map drops yet, right? This is going to be something big that you just need to accept is that as with everything, a single instance of running one map or doing a thing one time will never give you accurate results on what you're trying to do. You're going to have maps where you get nothing. You're gonna invest an insane amount. There, we got another T16 back out of it. We've made back what the maps that we've put in. Ultimately, we wanna get one more than that. But you need to accept the fact that you may get zero maps out of a map that you spent a ton of currency invested in, right? So you can see we're under three here. We'll do the metamorph. Um, it doesn't really matter what we choose. If you find maps, you can generally go for maps. So you can go for currency, divination cards, catalysts, anything like that is typically good. Kill the metamorphs, kill everything that you can in the map. It's super important for being able to get as much out of it as you possibly can. So we killed the metamorph, we got some extra items, and that's pretty much it for the map. So now I know that was a lot of info, but you can always jump back into it. There's timestamps that show you all the different things that you need to know. You can jump through the video, get to whatever point that you need and rewatch and relearn but I'm just going to do a short recap. Make sure that you invest in your maps. Make sure that you're running Conquerors and killing the Conquerors as much as you can, slotting in the actual Watchstones into your Atlas, making sure that the maps you wanna be able to run are visible on your Atlas, and invest, invest, invest in the maps. Also, clear everything in the map. Make sure that you're killing everything until it says less than 50 monsters remain. Those are the things that you need to know for actually running the maps. And that's it. This is one of the most fundamental things that you need to know how to do to be able to make it in this game. If you want to be able to farm effectively for currency, you're gonna need to be able to run high tier maps. So learn the strategies that I've given you here in this video. There may be some better ones out there, but this is the very basic level strategy from start to finish that will get you all the way through the Atlas. I'm Big Ducks, like this video if it helped you out, subscribe for more content similar to this, and stay safe out there in my class, and we'll see you guys in the next video.